As you travel across America or around the world, you might find one of these really unique art vending machines. This is the story of Artomat and why you really want to grab one of these inexpensive pieces of art as a souvenir. Well, uh, I created Artomat in 1997 and I'm a conceptual artist. So with Artomat, we sell things for $5 each. We have 200 venues around the country. We have anywhere from three to 400 artists at any given time. The original Artomat was based on a friend of mine who had a Pavlovian reaction to snack wrappers. So he would hear the crinkle of cellophane and then go buy something from the snack machine in the commissary by habit. We use cigarette machines now, but uh, that's because when I started doing this in 97, they were banned and they were, became available. Mm -hmm. um, if potato chips were banned in vending machines back in 97, I might be using a different type of machine. <laughs> but uh, so basically the original Artomat was a place called uh, Penn University. In this town, I was new to it and everyone was very approachable and nice. I'd, I'd kind of lived under the shadow of the corporate art scene of Charlotte outside of college, so I was not making much headway there except for with the punk group that we ran with. <laughs> you know, the people uh, who were wanting to have things to match their sofas, yeah. we didn't quite uh, resonate with that. Uh, but luckily with Winston, it's, it's a little more laid back. There's people who are friendly to the arts and not always chasing the, the soulless dollar. So they appreciate that artists kind of have their own way of doing things that don't quite match contemporary capitalism. And we sell things for five bucks, which is uh, not the best Venn price in the world, but it works for us with the mission of getting art into people's hands. And with that price point, artists are able to kind of balance things so they can produce while people who may not buy art otherwise can keep buying and justify it and have a quick collection. So we're sort of mimicking how things are now. Everything is so expensive, but we're getting by by uh, <coughs> keeping an eye on the mission and, and trying not to get in over our heads. And this is our 25th year. Basically, you know, Artemat just took over my life at times and uh, I officially went full-time with it in 2003 and and we've just been hanging on this it's, you know there's a lot of demand we have uh, orders coming in every day going somewhere around the country and then we have new contracts in the works all the time well so. I have about um, 125 machines in the warehouse right up the street I wish we could get you in there but you would you would sweat and and it's pretty frightening uh but you know if you wanted to see rust we have that covered uh people people give me machines at times and i buy them uh, a lot of the initial machines that are across the country now have a lineage to winston-salem and i can track it back and say this machine was there uh, the original artemat was at the original weston cafe which is a little tiny place over there uh, and then we have other machines from around the country. One of our machines in Las Vegas was in uh, Newport, Rhode Island at a gas station that's kind of famous that was in the middle of the road. And I don't know what it is now. It's probably a coffee shop. It's probably grown out of being a gas station. But it was notable, and I cleared out a lot of brake dust and stuff. But I kind of like how we're, we're at the $5 mark because it gets art in people's hands. And then... And then the artists who are chasing other things, who are trying to get famous or they have vanity issues, they don't stick around with Artemat long because they're wanting to make money or they're not, they want to be on TV or in magazines. What that ends up with us is people who are involved want to be involved and they're easier to work with. 